This crew steamer Kilmore was a steam-powered bulk freighter built in 1890. It served mainly for the transportation of merchandise across the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. The ship was constructed on behalf of William Johnston and Company, located in Liverpool. The construction of the ship was assigned to Edwards Shipbuilding Company and would take place at the shipyard of Howden, located along the River Tyne. The SS Kilmore was launched in 1889, but it wasn't until 1890 before the construction was finalised. The ship measured 87 metres long and 11 metres wide. For its time, the Kilmore was a very modern ship. It was equipped with the latest technologies. The winches and their propulsion were developed by Clark, Chapman and Co, located in Gateshead, enabling fast loading and unloading. The steering me mechanism was developed by John Hasty and Company. The steam-driven rudder was located in the engine compartment. A steel drive shaft connected to the rudder via a worm wheel gear, enabling the rudder to turn as appropriate. The rudder mechanism also contained oil-filled cylinders, dampening the forces exerted by the water onto the rudder. On May 20th, 1898, in favourable conditions, a clear sky and a calm sea, the Kilmore was heading full speed towards Salonika, when at about 4 a.m. a flare signal was observed. This emergency signal had been fired from the sailing ship Taxiatis, which was also heading towards Salonika. Because the Greek vessel was sailing without lights, it had remained unnoticed until that very moment. At the moment the flare was fired, both vessels had approached each other to less than a ship's length. The crew took all appropriate measures, but the collision could not be avoided. The SS Kilmore remained undamaged, but the Taxiarchi sank immediately, taking all but one of its crew with it. Since the Greek vessel was sailing without lights, the Kilmore was exonerated of all blame when this case came to trial. On August 4, 1904, the SS Kilmore collided with the SS Emerald near Smalls. The Emerald sank shortly after the collision. Fortunately, all crew members were rescued. For the Kilmore, the collision resulted in a dented bow. At the end of July 1906, the Kilmore was in the port of Antwerp, preparing to sail to Liverpool, not knowing that this would be her final voyage. Her cargo consisted of a shipment of porcelain, fragments of which can still be found in the wreck today, and gave it its nickname of the Porcelain Wreck.
And so on the 29th of July 1906, the Kilmore collided once more when it came across the Montezuma near the West Hinder lightship in the North Sea. At sea, when two ships approach each other head-on, the maritime traffic rules dictate that both ships should deviate to their starboard side and pass each other port to port. Only in rare cases would ships deviate to port side. However, this is exactly what happened in this case. The Kilmore announced its maneuver with two short horn blows, meaning I'm deviating to my port side. It's important to note that back in 1906, ships were not equipped with VHF radio and audio signals were the primary way of communication. The Montezuma confirmed the Kilmore's intention with two short horn blows and started steering starboard. Shortly after, the Kilmore gave another two short horn blows, restating its maneuver. The captain of the Montezuma gave three horn blows, indicating that they were switching their propulsion to reverse. Unfortunately, due to their high velocity, a collision could not be avoided, and the stern of the Montezuma ripped open the starboard side of the Kilmore. Fortunately, the Montezuma was able to rescue the entire crew of the Kilmore. For obvious reasons, both parties were in disagreement on who was responsible for the collision. As a result, the decision was left to be made by the Admiralty Division of the High Court of Justice. Both ships indicated they deviate to port side in order to pass the other vessel. According to the Kilmore's lawyers, the Montezuma's maneuvers didn't match the starboard-starboard encounter. The Kilmore stopped its engines very briefly and without decelerating. The Kilmore's lawyer claimed that the Montezuma also didn't slow down and that it didn't make any attempt to deviate and was to blame for the collision. However, the Montezuma's captain testified that after the exchange of its two horn blows, the Kilmore maintained course and speed while the Montezuma deviated to starboard and fully reversed its engines which was communicated with three horn blows. Right before the collision, the Montezuma brought its rudder back to amidships while the Kilmore tried to pass in vain, at which moment the Montezuma's stern collided with the Kilmore's flank. The court judged that the testimony, the ship's logs and the provided evidence matched best with the story of the captain of the Montezuma and that Kilmore's captain's story just didn't match the facts. Hence, the court ruled that the Kilmore was to blame and the Montezuma was cleared of all charges. The Convention on the Protection of the Underwater Cultural Heritage is a treaty that was adopted on the 2nd November 2001 by the General Conference of UNESCO. In line with this treaty, the SS Kilmore has been recognized as cultural heritage since it is a well-preserved site protruding from the seabed. The protection consists of a prohibition on all activities that could damage the wreck, such as anchoring, dredging and line fishing. The removal of objects found on or near the wreck is also prohibited. Any new objects found must be left in place and must be reported to the governor of the province of West Flanders. Although the wreck remains accessible to the public, all diving activities are to be reported in advance to the government. Upholding the protection of the wreck proves to be a noteworthy challenge to the authorities. The Kilmore was launched in 1890. 
The construction of the shipbuilding was 